All right, there you go. Hi, friends. Doc South here. Another episode of Aunt Barb's Magic Oven coming up. You know, I, I haven't been sharing these to Facebook. I, I figure, uh, or I, I guess I have done some. And I think I will share this uh, particular uh, segment just because, I don't know, I guess just because. Uh, I kind of like it, uh, although I got to admit, I like all the segments, all the chapters, but I haven't been wanting to push the book necessarily. But yeah, you might uh, find this one to your liking. Maybe it'll spark your interest to uh, go back to uh, chapter one, which is, again, on my YouTube site. You got to go through the gallery, but you'll see it. <laughs> Aunt Barb's Magic Oven, Chapter One, and then work your way through the, uh, uh, the um, well, my reading the story to you. Yeah. Now, I'm not doing, uh, you know, a, a, <laughs> I I don't know. I'm, I'm not doing, uh, I'm trying to think of a good, well, uh, a John Wayne reading here or anything. It's, uh, uh, it's, I'm just reading it. Yeah. As if I were to, uh, as if I were reading it to my kids. Um, it's, it's kind of fun. Of course, you can get a chapter of the book, uh, rather you can get a copy of the book. If you want, I'd be more than happy to send one your way. You just contact me. Uh, you can pay me if you're really broke, you can have it. If you're, uh, if you're really, uh, if you're regular daddy war bucks, well, you can, uh, you can pay more than the usual 10 bucks plus postage, uh, or anything in between. Okay. I'd like to get 10 and then some postage, but uh, again, I've, I've been known to give these, I, I probably have given way more of these away than I've sold, but I'm, I'm happy to do it. It's a, it's a neat book and I think it'll make people a bit happier. So it's sort of my thing. Okay. And I can always use donations on GoFundMe. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, and you get a book for the donation. Oh yeah. Uh, unless you don't want one. Right. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. Yeah. Doc South on GoFundMe. Right. Okay. Well, let's do this. Uh, Aunt Barb's Magic Oven, getting our nickels worth. <laughs> uh, I, I said I was re uh, ready, but really I, I would have taken Gabe's uh, description of what was on the other side of the uh, of the veil as gospel. Uh, he, he never lied to me yet. Gabe said that the nickel uh, uh, should be hitting the veil any second now. We waited. And then we waited some more. Then, I don't know, maybe just a little bit more. And after a while, I couldn't take the suspense. I asked Gabe if he threw that nickel in the right direction. Uh, he wasn't too happy about my remark and uh, pointed out that the veil would be pretty hard to miss. Uh, I, I guess even angels get sore when their throwing ability is challenged. Uh, I, I decided it wouldn't be too good an idea to wonder out loud if he threw the nickel at the right speed. Uh, besides, it, it had a hit sometime. Uh, my mind wandered back to when I was a kid and uh, a nickel would get me uh, 10 penny candies, uh, a Milky Way, uh, perhaps a nice tasty cake, apple pie, or a short ride on the boomerang at Bertrand's Island Amusement Park's Mick and Nickel Night. Uh, now a nickel's going to, now a nickel's going to blow a hole in the sheer fabric of existence. Talk about a deal. Uh, Gabe knocked on the top of my bubble. It, it just hit. Careful now, stay close. It just hit. I, I've i never had a great eyesight, and well, we were in a, we were about a million miles away, but even my human eyes could see the tiny flash off in the distance. I, I shouldn't use the word tiny. From our distance, uh, you know, a million miles away, that, that little speck of light in the dark had to, had to be more than enough to rip a planet to shreds. Uh, we sure got our nickels worth. I shuddered to think of what it would be, uh, what it would look like, uh, if a planet hit that curtain. Uh, just like Gabe, uh, just like Gabe said, a circular hole expanded from ground zero. It, it went down, uh, all to the sides and, and upwards, fanning out with a golden glow. The flame pattern was sort of like, well, if you were, uh, to hold a match to the center of a piece of paper. That kind of pattern, right. Of course, uh, this hole was uh, quickly becoming quite large. It was easily a million miles in diameter and growing. Uh, by now, I could have seen what was on the other side of existence beyond the veil if, if there was anything to see. But there was nothing, not one darn thing. It wasn't light. It wasn't dark. There were no sounds or aromas and not one solid liquid or gaseous piece of anything. G Gabe said there wasn't even temperature. No hot or cold. All there was was nothing. 
Suddenly the golden flame turned to green and reversed course. Gabe pounded on the top of my bubble. Doc, it's time to go. I, I forgot that by the time the hole patches itself, the explosion will be here. It's like when you're fired out by a cannon. You see the flash, and by the time you hear the gun go off, well, the cannonball is whizzing right by you. At least you hope it's whizzing by you. I, I thought that uh, in that one past life I had, uh, my fellow soldiers and I would uh, uh, always did our best to outrun those cannonballs. It, it's a hard thing to do, but, well, we did our best. Uh, besides, I, I could put two and two together. We were in, uh, we were in full retreat with Gabe and, uh, actually, no, before I could put two and two together, uh, we were in full retreat with Gabe in full glow, shielding me from the blast that came like a planet's worth of flaming bricks. Uh, I, I'm glad I was able to, I was glad he was able to protect me. He sure would have been handy at Gettysburg. I, man, I saw an awful lot of flame, lightning, debris, and hunks of Gabe's glow bars snapping and slipping uh, into the firestorm. Then just as fast as the blast came, it was gone. It petered out to uh, the distance uh, silently. Yep, all of a sudden it was gone. Yeah, Gabe and I uh, stepped uh, stopped to count our losses and our blessings. Uh, there was uh, there was some spots on my bubble that were a little bit bubbled out and lumpy. Uh, Gabe looked it over and didn't see any real damage, though he he did take a second or two to mention that I still had some green stuff stuck to my teeth. Uh, that's a fine thing to tell a guy when he's at the very edge of existence and and has his head stuck in a bubble. I, I guess I should have packed a toothbrush. Uh, Gabe was fine and still in glow mode. A couple of his light bars were either broken off or bent from the heat uh, of the explosion. Some of the flowing gold strands were tangled together in a bit shorter than they were before the blast. His his huge left eye was black. Uh, I'm not kidding. No, he must have uh, turned around to see how those how the how close the blast was, and then pow! Anything else in existence would have been toast. Uh, we looked back at the veil. It was good as new. Gabe said there was one more thing I had to see. He figured that I'd really dig it. Well, smelling a little smoky, we rode out a Dodge. Well, there you go, friends. Okay, so I hope you enjoy. Uh, you want to under understand what it's all about? Well, you got to read the you know the beginning of the book and work your way up to this. But and there's oh God, there's still probably another forty chapters to go. Okay, we'll see you later. Thank you and uh, bye now.